There's a lot of wide receivers this year, and so I'm going to be ranking my top 40 wide receivers for fantasy football, starting it off in the S tier. I have none other than Tyreek Hill. Now listen, there's a ton of good guys at the top, but when I'm looking at Tyreek Hill, and when I got done with my projections for the Miami Dolphins, I have Tyreek Hill projected at 368 fantasy points in full PPR, in half, 305, in standard, 241, 184 targets, 127 receptions, 1,800 yards, 9 total receiving touchdowns touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, he's a league breaker, league winner, but it's hard because I also have CeeDee Lamb right behind. And when you're looking at these rankings, I think it's a clear one-two for me between Tyreek Hill and CeeDee Lamb. Now, some people prefer CeeDee Lamb after that amazing level season that he had last year with Dak Prescott. The fact that the Dallas Cowboys don't add anything significant across from him in the wide receiver realm when you're really still talking about, is it going to be Brandon Cooks? You got Jake Ferguson as a tight end. This offense is going to run through CeeDee Lamb. And so I understand why a lot of people are excited about CeeDee Lamb, have him a spot ahead to Tyreek Hill. I just think Tyreek Hill, it's been proven production. I know he's getting up there in age. People are worried that he's going to be losing a step, but I don't care because that dude is just that good. The next guy is going to be a little bit controversial when we're taking a little bit of a look at it. It is going to be Mr. Jamar Chase. So when we look at Jamar Chase, we're going to say this about Jamar Chase. I understand last year was a down year and we need to forgive Jamar Chase for that because it wasn't his fault that Joe Burrow ended up getting injured. I also understand that a lot of people in this tier that we're talking about in this S tier are excited about a lot of the guys behind, but when I did my projections, Jamar Chase 344.5 points per game in PPR. I think the Bengals are going to be passing the ball a ton. I think the volume between Jamar Chase and T Higgins is going to be significant. So I do like Jamar Chase as the wide receiver three this year because I think honestly last year he was in for a major year, but injuries to Joe Burrow absolutely derailed the offense. So I'm confident taking Jamar Chase as my wide receiver one, especially if I'm able to get Jamar Chase at the 104, 105 spot. Feels like an absolute steal this year at that current cost but we're talking Justin Jefferson as my wide receiver four also in this S tier listen when we're talking about these first seven picks in fantasy football drafts we're talking about superstars all across the board so really it's just going to be your preference your flavor Justin Jefferson honestly I do have a little bit lower only 310 points in PPR compared to where I had Jamar Chase at 344. Honestly, it was a lot closer pre-JJ McCarthy injury. We had to change some stuff, change some efficiency, go look, look at the numbers, kind of add a few more rushing attempts to the Minnesota Vikings as a whole. And that really dropped Justin Jefferson in my overall rankings. But we do know the talent. We also know the fact that he was able to perform with really crappy quarterback play last year post Kirk Cousins. So Sam Darnold honestly should be an upgrade over what he saw in that. And so I'm very confident with Justin Jefferson as my wide receiver four. My wide receiver five is going to be Amon St. Brown. And I already hear a lot of you. There's a lot of you in the chat that you like Amon St. Brown more than Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. Listen, he is safer. I 100% agree. But I think there's more upside with Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. So just kind of depends on your flavor. Like I said, these guys are all so close here in the S tier that it's just going to be a matter of preference with how you want to go about deploying them. We started off in the A tier though, and we got AJ Brown who had a massive season last year for the Philadelphia Eagles. My biggest concern with AJ Brown and this Philadelphia Eagles offense is what are these passing attempts going to look like? They bring in Kellen Moore, which is exciting because we should see more of an air raid type attack, but they did sign Saquon Barkley in free agency, which means probably maybe a little bit less touchdown upside for the receivers, just assuming that Jalen Hurts and Saquon Barkley are going to get theirs. But I still have AJ Brown projected at 296 points in PPR. Feels really good. Have him as my wide receiver six. Very safe play. And especially when you're able to get AJ Brown in that late first, early second, AJ Brown is an absolute doll. We move on to the next guy in this tier and we're scrolling all the way down to find Mr. Puka Nakua, who we are adding back into this A tier. And Puka Nakua, a lot of people are worried about Cooper Cup and rightfully so. Puka Nakua came on the scene out of nowhere, out of BYU last year, was the waiver wire darling. People were picking him up or drafting him super late in your drafts and he absolutely paid off. Now, another year with an older Matthew Stafford, what is this running back core going to look like with Kyron Williams and Blake Corum? How's the offensive line going to hold up? As my wide receiver seven, I feel very much so locked in with Puka Nakua at this spot. Absolutely love it for Puka Nakua. The overall value. Like I said, these guys, when we're talking here, if I had Puka Nakua as my wide receiver one, maybe I at the back end of the first of the 112, I grabbed a Jameer Gibbs Puka Nakua. Like, I absolutely love that start at the 112. Or even if you're at the 110 and you're able to get a similar level start in the 10-man, that actually feels 
really good. Now we move on to the next player in this A tier, and it's going to be a little bit less than consensus. So the next guy in this A tier is going to be Garrett Wilson for the New York Jets. And listen, I understand you sometimes have to take Garrett Wilson ahead of Devontae Adams. Typically, you do have to take Garrett Wilson ahead of Devontae Adams. And this is me and me being pretty unbiased, because if you're asking me in my heart of hearts, I would 100% love to take Garrett Wilson ahead of Devontae Adams. But when we're looking at my overall projections, I have Garrett Wilson slotted in around 8 to 10 fantasy points lower than Devontae Adams. And so when my projection model tells me, hey, I have Devontae Adams higher than Garrett Wilson, I have to be unbiased because I do like Garrett Wilson. I love the highlight catches that he's getting from Aaron Rodgers in camp. I like the overall upside that he does possess. But Garrett Wilson is just going to slide in here as my wide receiver nine. And I think he's going to be a great value. I think he's going to return that wide receiver one price tag that you're going to have to pay into him. But I do think that is kind of where I have him ranked um, at this current time. Like I said, we're constantly adjusting these rankings based on things happening, based on injuries. I do feel pretty good about Garrett Wilson right there. My next guy is going to be Nico Collins, who is now in an offense where he has to compete with targets with not only Stefan Diggs, but also with a returning healthy Tank Dell. I have Nico Collins returning around one fancy points projection less than Garrett Wilson. Not only did Nico Collins have an amazing year in 2023, he had a crazy touchdown efficiency. When people talk about, hey, well, I'm worried about Nico Collins with Tank Dell. If you actually look at the splits with Nico Collins, with Tank Dell, Nico Collins actually performed better with Tank Dell. So add in the fact that Stefan Diggs is now on this offense. Listen, sure, maybe Nico Collins isn't going to have a 150 target target share, but Nico Collins is going to be able to be super uber efficient because who are you ta- who are you going to be doubling? Are you doubling Tank Dell? Are you doubling Nico Collins? You're leaving Stefan Diggs on an island? Like you're going to have to have all these guys on single coverage with an elite level quarterback in CJ Stroud. Dude's absolutely going to be cooking. Now, we kind of, this is where things continue to kind of be a little bit awry in my rankings and how I don't feel great about it. But when I did the overall Atlanta Falcons projections, I have Drake London sliding in as my wide receiver 11. And I have Drake London getting 262 fantasy points. I have him getting 152 targets, 97 receptions. And I think everything that we've seen with Drake London and this overall volume for the Atlanta Falcons is finally going to show itself in year three. Now, we haven't seen uh, any sort of crazy fantasy football points from Drake London up to this point in his career, but it's really been because of crappy quarterback play. Drake London, this is going to be a make or break year. So this current price, this current ranking of Drake London is risky, ladies and gentlemen. I 100% understand because we don't know if Drake London, even if he gets the volume, if he can be an elite level fantasy football wide receiver. Absolutely love the prospect. I love how he came out of the University of Southern California, USC, big body type wide receiver. Give him Mr. Coles Cash himself as a quarterback. Give him Michael Penix. I think there is a lot to like with Drake London. And my last guy in this tier is going to be Marvin Harrison Jr. And to be fair, if you're in a draft, you typically have to take Marvin ahead of Devontae, Nico, and Drake London. I just don't currently have this projected this way. And I'll be honest, as an Ohio State fan, I will not be having a ton of shares of Marvin Harrison Jr. in year one. And this could be a major mistake. Marvin Harrison Jr. potentially could be the second coming to Jamar Chase of Justin Jefferson. And I, you're getting a huge discount with drafting him as you know a back-end wide receiver one. I have met wide receiver 12 because I'm just being wary, understanding Understanding that there is going to be a learning curve to the NFL as much as he is going to be an elite level asset right now for fantasy football. 261 points in PPR is kind of where I have him ranked. I am a little bit worried about what that overall target share is going to look like. I mean, I gave him this year, I gave him 151 targets. That seems like a lot, but really it's, that could be a little high for Marvin Harrison Jr. in year one. So it'll be exciting to see if Marvin Harrison Jr. proves me wrong. Listen, I will be so happy because I have plenty of shares of him in Dynasty, but in redraft, it's going to be hard for me to really push Marvin Harrison Jr. any higher currently in my rankings. You can maybe debate, hey, I'd put Marv ahead of Drake London just based on the prospect profile, based on Kyler Murray. You do you. We move on to my B tier, and the first guy in my B tier starting this off is going to be Jalen Waddle for the Miami Dolphins. And the same reasons that we like, we love the efficiency, we love the big shot ability of Tua and Tyreek Hill. We love Jalen Waddle. But even last year, Jalen Waddle finished as the wide receiver 22 on a points per game basis with 14.2. So he is was going in a similar range on a points per game basis as guys like Chris Olave, Devontae Smith. So as a wide receiver too, he is getting kind of a huge bump for me in my overall rankings, but I just can't get behind Jalen Waddle going any higher 
player. And I do think this is an appropriate level projection for Jalen Wall. My next guy in this tier is going to be Chris Olave. And Chris, as another Ohio State legend, a dude who absolutely balls out, I think his situation, similar to Drake London, has been just absolutely crappy since he entered into the NFL. But unlike Drake London, he has not gotten a quarterback upgrade, still playing with Derek Carr. And they lost Jameis Winston, who absolutely loved to throw the ball up. I think Chris Olave will be an absolute target machine. I think he'll probably get somewhere around 152 targets. The issue is that's probably only going to translate to somewhere around like 96 receptions, which is going to be good enough to be kind of a high-end wide receiver too. But I think the upside for him to be a high-end wide receiver one, he's going to have to have a ton of touchdown upside. I put him as a very solid as like a six touchdowns. But even like we said last year in the 16 games that he played, 14.5 fantasy points per game, he only ended up with five total touchdowns. So I think he's going to need a massive boost in touchdown upside for him to really achieve the ultimate level ceiling. So that's kind of why I have him here next in the tier. My next guy after Chris Olave is going to be Mr. Old Reliable Mike Evans in the B tier. And the same reasons that we like a lot of these other guys, we like Mike Evans because he has done it year in and year out on the fantasy football field. Last year, Mike Evans was wide receiver 11 on a points per game basis with 16.6 fantasy points per game in full PPR. These are our full PPR statistics when we're talking about these wide receivers. And Mike Evans, like we said, he got 1,255 yards and 13 receiving touchdowns. And not only do we have Dave Canales leave, but they re-signed Baker Mayfield. So I, I don't think it's like an amazing situation for Mike Evans, but he's also been able to kind of show, hey, he performed better with Baker Mayfield. He performed better with Jameis Winston than he did with Tom Brady on a points per game basis. So Mike Evans absolutely love the value on him this year. He's just continuing to get up there in age. There's always the hamstring issues that seem to plague Mike Evans. He plays through them, but it's always a little bit of a worry having him on your roster when he potentially might leave the game early if that so happens. The next guy in this tier, B tier, is going to be Devontae Smith, who is the clear wide receiver too for the Philadelphia Eagles. He does have an elite level quarterback playing alongside A.J. Brown. 254 fantasy points is what I have him projected for this next year. When we look at him last year on a fantasy points per game basis, he averaged Average 14.2 fantasy points per game. So Devontae Smith, another one where how much is this Kellen Moore offense going to affect? I, I think that's the biggest question where you could be getting great values on Devontae Smith and A.G. Brown just based on the fact that we don't know how elite level this passing volume is going to be. It could be low, could be super high, could just be in the middle. So I put it right in the middle. If it is high by any stretch of the imagination, Devontae Smith could see himself being, like we said, a back-end wide receiver one based on that overall volume. The next guy at wide receiver 17 for me is going to be Amari Cooper who gets Deshaun Watson back. A lot of people are nervous about Amari Cooper because of that, because we saw how elite he was with Joe Flacco last season on a points per game basis. Our guy, Amari Cooper, was wide receiver 18, 15.1 fantasy points per game in 2023. I have him, like I said, sliding in here in the projection machine to wide receiver 17, getting 252 fantasy points over the whole entire season. So 149 targets, 89 receptions. We'll have to see how that actually comes into play. We got Nick Chubb coming off an injury. They bring in Jerry Judy, David Njoku, but it's still clear Clearly, Amari Cooper as the wide receiver one in this overall offense. Let me know where you're valuing Amari Cooper in fantasy football. We move on to our wide receiver 18, and that's going to be T. Higgins. And Mr. T. Higgins, a lot of people like T. Higgins. I like T. Higgins as well as a guy that grew up in Ohio, a Bengals fan. The issue with T. Higgins has not been his on-field production. It has been how healthy can he stay because that affects his fantasy points per game basis. And like last year, when you're looking at his overall fantasy points per game basis, he finished as wide receiver 42 on a points per game basis with 11.5, which is not great, not elite by any stretch of the imagination, especially when you have to take them in the top like 20 to 22 receivers. I have them a little bit higher in my projection because I do think him alongside Joe Burrow this year, like we said, it affected Jamar Chase's overall upside. It really affected T. Higgins because T. Higgins needed Joe Burrow to throw him some of those touchdowns. They weren't scoring a ton of touchdowns through the air. So like T. Higgins in 2024 fantasy football, it is a make or break year. It is contract year. I will add that caveat in. So excited to see what T. Higgins can can do for the Cincinnati Bengals. We move on to our wide receiver 19. And this is going to be a surprise to a lot of people. But if you've tuned in the channel at all, you know that I'm high on this guy. It's going to be Deontay Johnson. And Deontay Johnson's an absolute ball knower, ball getter for the Carolina Panthers. And last few years with the Pittsburgh Steelers, dude's been having a target share of anywhere between like 150 to 160 targets. Last year was the only year where that wasn't the case. Part of it was injury. Part of it was just the overall crappy offense, the crappy quarterback play ends up in a Dave Canales led offense. And Dave Canales has talked about we our offense is only going as far as Deontay Johnson. When Bryce Young, his first read is to Deontay Johnson and Deontay Johnson absolutely thrives in those first eight yards off the line. 
line of scrimmage. I think this is going to be a huge addition for Deontay Johnson in this offense. So definitely like him rounding out my B tier. Definitely higher than a lot of people currently have Deontay Johnson. You really don't have to draft him this high, but this is currently where I have him ranked. And my next guy in the C tier is going to be Brandon Ayuk. And you can make the argument that Caleb, what the heck? Your rankings are starting to get a little bit wacky because I have Brandon Ayuk ranked here uh, way above. He should be in the B tier. I hear all of those complaints. I hear those concerns. But when I do my projections, I do not take personal feelings. I am trying to win fantasy football championships. And I think Brandon Ayuk, even though there was the potential that he got, would get traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers, he didn't. And I have Brandon Ayuk locked in around five fantasy points less than Deontay Johnson in my current rankings. I mean, last year on a fantasy points per game basis, Brandon Ayuk was wide receiver 17 with 15.6. Now, my biggest concern is how does that affect him, Debo, George Kittle, CMC? A lot of questions involved. You got Ricky Persall, who gets drafted as a clear wide receiver three. Is Brock Purdy still going to be as elite and efficient as he was last season? a lot of question marks. Brandon Nuke is an elite level talent. So me putting him here in my tier list maybe feels a little bit low. Maybe I should have gone a little bit higher in my overall tier list with Brandon Ayuk, but you let me know down below. Where do you currently view Brandon Ayuk in your fantasy football rankings? My next guy, and we are moving on into wide receiver 21, is going to be Mr. Zay Flowers for the Baltimore Ravens. And there's a lot of people that like Zay. There's a lot of people that don't like Zay. I am one of those guys that absolutely love Zay. I think with him, with Mark. Mark Andrews in year two for Zay with Lamar Jackson with another year in this offense. A lot of great passing attacks, a lot of great connections being built. Zay Flowers gives me little Antonio Brown vibes. And I think if he can really start to solve that and have an efficient level season, he could be absolutely off the rocker with 132 targets, 90 receptions is what I haven't projected with seven total receiving touchdowns. Feel confident with him here in the C tier. My next guy in the C tier is going to be DJ Moore. And DJ Moore gets maybe the best quarterback of his entire career in Caleb. Williams. Listen, I love some Justin Fields. We see the bias that could potentially happen with some of these Buckeyes, but Justin Fields is not the same prospect as Caleb Williams. I can 100% acknowledge that, but we saw what DJ Moore was able to do with Justin Fields, who up to last season was the best quarterback that DJ Moore had played with since Cam Newton. Absolutely elite level stuff from DJ Moore. And then we add in, like we said, the fact that we think this offense in year two with Caleb Williams is going to be even good. Now he performed at 16.9 face points per game was the wide receiver nine. So you're going to say, Caleb, if you performed at the wide receiver nine last year, we think the situation is getting better. Why do you have him so low? Well, the Bears drafted Romo Dunze. And so now we got and brought in Keenan Allen. So now the receiving core, instead of competing with Darnell Mooney uh, for wide receiver targets, he's having to compete with another level alpha and Keenan Allen, as well as Romo Dunze, who's a budding alpha. And so I think the overall target share is going to be a little bit more split up. I still think DJ Moore is going to eat. That's why I have him ranked here, the highest level of any of these Bears wide receivers. But I do think it is appropriate valued here at the wide receiver 22. My wide receiver 23 is going to be none other than Christian Kirk. And listen, we're going to have to go rapid fire here because I am just over here absolutely talking, but I like Christian Kirk in the Trevor Lawrence led offense. I think it is going to be uber efficient with them heading into this next year. Of course, they had Brian Thomas. They add Gabe Davis. It's not going to affect Christian Kirk's overall fantasy football value. Next guy is going to be Malik Neighbors. And I think a lot of people are hyped about Malik Neighbors. A lot of people are worried. I have him just down here, like I said, in the C tier. I think there's a lot to like with him on this Giants love offense. He's had a lot of highlight plays in camp, a lot of things to look at and like, but I do have Malik Neighbors as my wide receiver 24. Now, wide receiver 25, we're going to move to Cooper Cup. And Cooper Cup is an elite level fantasy football option. Listen, he's getting up there in age. He's had some hamstring injuries. Hopefully that has gotten solved this year. A lot of people are worried about Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, who's going to eat. I I like Cooper Cup, and I think he can get really great value on Cooper Cup. I Maybe he should be earlier, but like I said, these are wide receivers. There's just so many good wide receivers this year. Cooper Cup, we have Stefan Diggs and Debo Samuel. And a lot of people have these two veteran wide receivers a little bit higher in their overall rankings. We saw the elite level upside from a guy like Stefan Diggs last year with the Buffalo Bills kind of fell off on the second half new regime with him joining the Houston Texans with CJ Stroud Debo Samuel a lot of people like him wide receiver 13 the last season he's getting up there in age what is that you know continuous target share going to look like with him Brandon Ayuk George Kittle CMC I know a lot of people love the touchdown upside Vegas has the 49ers projected for the most points so this could be a dumb ranking for me with Debo in my C tier but that kind of rounds out the value on the C tier for me when we move to our D tier we got a bunch of guys kind of starting off. We got DK Metcalf, Chris Godwin, and Jaden Reed. Thing I want to say, DK Metcalf, new offense with Ryan Grubb. What He's got a good connection with Geno Smith. Chris Godwin coming into this kind of spot, being ranked for me as my overall wide receiver 29. 215 fantasy points is kind of where I'm having him projected. Jaden Reed is the first wide receiver that I think is going to lead the team in targets. Listen, a lot of people
people like Christian Watson, Datavion Wicks is getting a ton of hype later on down the board. I just cannot get on it. We move on to our next guy, and it's honestly going to be Tank Dell. We've talked about our this overall Texans wide receiver core um, in the D tier. I just, it's going to be interesting to see where Stefan Diggs and Tank Dell kind of slide in next to Nico Collins. I could be completely wrong. Tank Dell could be 100% be the wide receiver one. He ha- absolutely looked electric in the preseason game, but this is kind of where I have Tank Dell ranked. I got Michael Pittman Jr. next, and Michael Pittman Jr. to me has had an insane target share, and I don't think he's that good of a wide receiver. And so maybe this is a little bit biased for me as someone that lives in Indiana. I watch the Colts. I'm a little bit worried about how this offense besides Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor are going to look. And so this could 100% be low in the D tier. You guys might call me an idiot, but like I said, I'm making these rankings how I view these rankings, and I do have Michael Pittman Jr. down here in the D tier. We move on to the next guy in this tier, and it's going to be Terry McLaurin and Keenan Allen. And both these guys, like I said, Keenan Allen joins the Bears. Terry McLaurin has Jane Daniels as a rookie level quarterback. I just have these guys both as like, like we said, like this point, they're like high end wide receiver threes. Even these high end wide receivers are going to give you wide receiver one, high end wide receiver two weeks. Like it's going to be super competitive. We're looking at these overall tiers really I start to feel pretty not comfortable past Nico Collins like once it gets past Nico Collins Drake London Martin Harrison Jr. everybody here can perform at a top five wide receiver level I I'm convinced it's a super talented deep wide receiver core this year but this is kind of how I'm seeing it with Keenan Allen and Terry McLaurin, and these overall rankings. In my E tier, this is where things get interesting. I do have George Pickens. I know he's the wide receiver one. I know a lot of people have him break out. I'm a little bit lower on George Pickens as a whole on consensus than a lot of people are. A lot of people have George Pickens absolutely balling their way to the top, but I have George Pickens right here. I got Christian Watson next. We said Jaden Reed. I think he's the wide receiver one. Christian Watson, if he can get those hamstring issues figured out, is going to be the wide receiver two in this overall offense. I got Brian Thomas sliding in next. Like we said, he's gotten the pedigree. He got the draft capital to the Jacksonville Jaguars. What that target share is going to look like next to a guy like Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, still to be seen. Rasheed Rice, I know a lot of people are worried about a suspension. I am not worried about a suspension for Rasheed Rice. Absolutely love our guy, Rasheed. Next guy in this tier for me, and we're going with ultimate level upside, is going to be Xavier Worthy and then Curtis Samuel. Both these guys, Curtis Samuel gets the best quarterback of his career in Josh Allen. Xavier Worthy enters an absolute dominant Chiefs wide Wide receiver core offense. I think both these guys are going to eat high upside shots later in your draft. I just talked about in yesterday's video, the next guy, it's going to be Lad McConkey and Calvin Ridley. I'm curious to see how Calvin Ridley is going to perform in this Tennessee Titans offense. I know he got paid. I know I'm just worried about his efficiency and his overall metrics. I like Lad a ton. And then kind of rounding it out, I got JSN and Jordan Addison. Love both of these guys to round out my wide receiver tiers. So these are my wide receiver tiers. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you would change, what your rankings would change. But I appreciate all y'all for tuning in a little bit longer of a video. Hit that like and subscribe button. If you like fantasy football, I'm going to be providing tier lists for you each and every week to help you win your fantasy football leagues, your fantasy football weeks your fantasy football championships here are two more videos to tune in if you haven't checked out these already and i'll catch you on the next one peace